Thanks for joining me, everyone. Today we're checking out the Seneca Eagle Claw. Now these are like Western style guns. So see what I'm talking about? Go over to Pyramid Air, hit Air Guns, then choose Air Rifles, and under Brands, just check off Seneca, and I'll show you everything they got. So today we're checking out their lever action, Seneca Eagle Claw, full size version. This is about 45 inches long with a 20 inch barrel, but you can get a carbide version of the Eagle Claw, and that is gonna have a 17 inch barrel, and it's only gonna be 41 inches long. But these things deliver a powerful punch. They're available in 22 and 25 caliber. 22 caliber is gonna have 51 foot pounds of energy. In the full size version, the carbine with a slightly shorter barrel is gonna have 45 foot pounds of energy in 22. In 25 caliber, we're looking at 70 foot pounds of energy. Shots per fill. So it's going to give you 35 full power shots in 22 caliber and 25 full power shots in 25 caliber. These are super accurate, super powerful hunting rigs. The whole Seneca line is designed for hunting. They make a double barreled air gun shotgun called the Seneca Double Shot. Another version of their shotgun is the Seneca Wing Shot 2. They got the Seneca Dragon Claw Dual Tank, which is actually a 50 caliber with 500 cc's of air. They got the Seneca 44909 Light Hunter. These are all about the same price too. And that one shoots a 45 caliber. And then I actually have this one as well. I ordered it and it's sitting here. The Seneca Recluse, which is their 357 bolt action. So all those that I mentioned are bolt actions. The Eagle Claw is the only one that's lever action. As you can see, the Eagle Claw is 22 and 25 caliber. All those other ones I mentioned are big bores. But they all have those beautiful western style stocks. Real quick, here's a few more hardcore stats on the Seneca Eagle Claw. It's got a right-handed Indonesian walnut Monte Carlo stock, rubber recoil pad, it runs off 200 bar or 3000 psi, it's a lever action repeater, it's got awesome stippling on the pistol grip and forend which we're going to take a look at. You got a Weaver Picatinny optics rail. The magazine in 22 caliber is going to hold 10 shots, 25 caliber is going to hold 8 shots. It's got a shredded barrel. It is very quiet. I expected it to be super loud, but it was actually really quiet. It's got a Foster Quick Disconnect fill fitting built into the gun, so no fill probe required. That's awesome. And here's another big one, adjustable power. So here's a quick look at that power wheel. All the way to the right is going to be high power. So the red dot is high power. Turn to the left, and the green dot is medium power. And then all the way to the left, the black dot is low power. And then there's eight settings in between each dot. So you literally have like 24 power levels that all have their own detents that you can adjust. You're going to be able to tune for any ammo. As well, you can turn this down and probably shoot it like 300 feet per second if you want to. So super cool. It says that you can deliver follow-up shots with this gun in less than a second. And it says also that it includes two magazines. Let's just read a little bit of the description. It says this is a fun to shoot PCP repeater with a smooth, easy to cock lever action. It says add a little western wild flavor to your hunting, paper target punching, or backyard pest control with one of these slick looking lever action repeaters. These PCP air guns feature easily adjustable power, smooth lever action cocking, and deliver up to a whopping 70 foot pounds of muzzle energy in 25 and 45 foot pounds in 22 caliber. Although, my 20-inch barrel is delivering 51 foot-pounds in 22. Add the fact that this repeater platform can deliver follow-up shots in less than a second. We already said that. And you're talking about a rifle that's extra quick on the draw. Plus, its shredder barrel takes quite a bit of the bark out of its bite for backyard-friendly shooting. It is super quiet. It looks like the full-size version that we're looking at here has a 460cc air tank. It's going to give you 35 shots per fill in 22 and 25 shots per fill in 25 caliber. The carbine version with the 17 inch barrel is going to be sporting a 380 cc air tank. And that's it. That thing poking out right there is actually one of your baffles. And so we're going to clean this right now. And you're going to get a look at the sound moderation system basically. So there's three baffles inside here and one spring. So I'm gonna pull those out. And the front one has an O-ring on it. Basically those pieces fit together like that and that's what provides your sound moderation. 
Now is the part where we're going to clean this air gun with ballastol, which is safe for air gun seals, and a JL crown saver, which is a flexible cleaning rod because you never want to use a metal rod on an air gun. So this shroud is on there super tight, but you can still get it off by hand. I managed to loosen it up, and it's a two-part shroud. So this is the front of it, nice and greasy, and that threads into the end of your barrel, actually. That's what it looks like down the tube. So that's going to thread in right there, right in the middle of your aluminum barrel band system there. And that probably gives you a nice tension barrel. I did see a little target crown on the end of that thing too. It's always important to clean your air gun before you shoot it or your firearm because they put preservative gunk in the barrel so that the barrels won't rust if the guns happen to sit on the shelves for a few years before they sell. <laughs> And there's that junk you want to get out of your barrel before you shoot it. So I'm going to clean the rest of this off camera and we're ready to rock and roll. All right, I got that as clean as a jelly bean. Now I'm ready to put it back together. And I just wanted to note that when I did unscrew this whole thing, this is actually loose as well. So when I screw this all back together, I want to make sure I tighten both of these. Make sure they're nice and tight. As tight as you can get it with your hand is how tight you want to get it. Yeah, I got that really tightened. When I tighten this, it tightened that. We're all tight. The best way to store an air gun is always decocked. So to decock your gun, you're just going to grab the lever action charging handle, depress the trigger, and let it down gently, and then you'll be decocked. Last thing I had to do was put my baffles in in the right order, and then your shroud end cap just threads in there. If you wanted to put a moderator on this, you just get a one-half UNF adapter, and put it in place of your end cap, and then you'll be able to put your favorite LDC on this bad boy. After I polished it up a bit, there was just one more thing left to do. Boom. I installed my Helix, and now it's party time. All right, here's what's going on. I'm set up there at 35 yards, but I basically have 13, 14, 18, 15.89, 25, 33 grain. Let's try them all real fast and see what they say over the chronograph. I was guessing that the 18 grains were going to be a good pellet for this gun, and I was right. 35 yards, nailed it. So here's a full shot string on the 18 grains, as well as a sample of the grouping. Check this out. I probably took about 10 shots just then. My needle didn't even budge. This is something I haven't seen before. Saying that this gets 35 shots is not exactly accurate, because you're about to see I got 44 shots, and I didn't even get halfway through the green zone. So between about 250 and 150, you're gonna stay under 1,000 feet per second. And as long as you are, that is your first 35 shots, I was even at the same spot and I got 35 shots inside of a nickel. So basically you're gonna have no change in the point of impact for your first 35 shots. So we are still in the green zone for sure. Boy, this, this gets a lot of shots, okay? I'm using up a good portion of my 10 right here. And then you're probably gonna get another 35 but what happens is the FPS and the point of impact start to rise a little bit. You knew where it was going to go. You could just crank your power wheel down a few notches and you probably keep your point of impact right where it was. So super cool. I was just explaining here that I was able to sink all 35 shots in a nickel size hole. And then it was only after I got above a thousand feet per second that it started rising up and getting some of these wiggity waggity ones here. But again, if I would have just lowered my FPS, I probably would have been hitting the same spot. So definitely manageable. And this group right here is just the first five shots after I sighted in the 18.1 grain FX pellets. I did not have the target cam going because this was not official testing. 35 yards, nailed it. Okay, it's super, super windy, like 20 mile an hour winds. So I don't have a target cam going. This is not official. I'm just going to kind of sight in with the 18 grains.
Nice. I was probably a smidge over uh, 200, so. Look at that, you guys. One shot side in. Freaking killing it. And it's windy, but we're only at 35 yards. Bullseye killer. <laughs> very, very nice. That's your official group. 18 grain. Drilling it. The Eagle Claw has a really good trigger. Here's a look at it. The lever action is definitely awesome. So you can rack on that charging lever as hard as you want. It's made to be slammed around. And this is a two-stage adjustable trigger. The safety is located right here, that gold button. And although it's only sticking out about halfway, it's super easy to hit on and off. There'll be a red ring exposed when you're ready to shoot. And then it's a two-stage trigger under three ounces. So it really is one of the best things about this gun. And it contributes to the overall smoothness of it. This is a smooth gun to shoot. It's basically recoilless. The official trigger pull comes in at just 2.9 ounces. There's a couple things I noticed in the manual. Your trigger is adjustable, but I would never recommend adjusting triggers on air guns. But the other thing is that you can move the stop screw from left to right, so this gun can be loaded from the left hand or the right hand side. So the Magazina, it says load pellet skirt first, this side only. So you basically drop a pellet in there, Spin it to the next one in the direction of the arrow until it's full. And then on this side, you're going to have that, whatever that is. I'm going to call it a notch, even though it's the opposite of a notch, whatever that is. And then that corresponds with the shape of your magwell right there, you see, right there. See this go. Slide it in, it snaps right in beautifully. If you look right there, there's a little metal piece that stops your magazine perfectly where it goes. And that right there, again, is called the stop screw. And you just change it from right to left if you want to load your magazine from the other side. Now, I'm about to do some super fun shooting out to 70 yards. But I was not able to do any more official accuracy testing on this gun for a pretty lame reason. It's a first in Ergen Channel history, actually. Here's what happened. Okay, this is my weather app, and it gives it to me hourly. So, if I hit that, all right, so let's just go for, right now it's 11. See right there we got 19 mile an hour winds, okay, unfortunately. And I've checked the entire week, so if we go down here to like 5 p.m., we're going to have 18 mile an hour winds, see right there? So then we keep going down here, and we go to Friday, because let's say, well, I can just... Shoot Friday at 8, 8 a.m. is which is what I, I usually do. I've done it before. Friday at 8 a.m. Oh, we're going to have winds of 15 miles an hour. So it's been like this all week. And it's the first time I think I've lived here for two years that we don't have at least one or two calm days. So anyway, there was no way to finish this video um, with any more accuracy testing. But I did this instead. It's very windy right now. It's so windy that there's no way we can do accuracy testing at 50 yards. I would literally shoot a couple and they would go three inches to one side of the bullseye and I'd shoot two more and they'd go three inches to the other side. So I know it's not the gun, I know it's not me. It's just uh, too crazy in this wind and it's not gonna stop for like the whole week. So what I am gonna try to do though is with these 18 grain, I got some cans set up at different intervals all the way out there too and 70 yards at the very end so let's see if we can hit these babies I'm sure we can I'm gonna get a quick sign in at 50 yards my Amazon box oh no <laughs> see if I can tell where I hit right here
I'll have to parallax out for each of these. So there's parallax 35 yards. Get this guy right at the bottom. Wait, I'm at 50, so I'm going to be a little... Smurf it. Let's plug it again just for good measure. All right. That was easy. Aim too high on that one. <laughs> that was awesome. Took a while to get down there. Oh, that was easy. So that was 60 yards right there. Oh, we got some long dogs over here. Oh, I almost hit it on my first try. Boy, yeah, I can see what the wind's doing. Watch this. I don't know nothing about winning, so I'm just guessing. About right there. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I didn't even have my parallax on. Hold on. I give us a little clearer picture there. Oh, now it's going the other way. The wind's going the other way. Oh, that was awesome. Wow. So yeah, it was so windy that I was basically holding four inches to one side in order to hit the can. So that was actually pretty fun. Okay, the wind's going the other way. You can see that most of these shots were direct hits too. Here's a can that I hit at 40 yards. And then this one right here is one of the ones I hit at 70 yards. Perfectly in the center. So yeah, I really enjoyed shooting this gun. I really love the cowboy style of it and the accuracy. And if I had one air gun only, this may be my choice. It blends in with all your firearms. And uh, anyway, that's my take on it. I loved it. Time for me to get out of here. Like I said, we got the 357 Recluse coming at you pretty soon. And a lot more where that came from. All right, everyone. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Till next week. Happy shooting. We'll see you on the next one.